So, uh, welcome. I'm a professor of strategy and Branimir is an entrepreneur and CTO of Original Trail. Let's uh, cut to the chase. Um, Branimir, how does Original Trail make money? Do you make money? <laughs> That's a, that's a very good question. Yeah, so we've been building up uh, systems for food supply chain transparency for the most uh, part of, of, our, of our lifetime, which is the last six years. So we've been uh, engaged in quite a, quite a few um, use cases in Europe as well as in China when it comes to showing mostly customers where their ingredients in their food come from. So, can, can, can you make that yeah. concrete for us, a concrete use case? Yeah, so uh, imagine that this was a bottle of uh, yogurt and mm -hmm. uh, on each of these bottles you have something some, somewhat of a barcode. Um, these are actually by GS1 standardized barcodes and uh, once you scan them you actually can identify the product but you cannot identify what's inside. For that you need additional identifiers so we actually managed to use the actual um, date of expiry that you can see here on top of, for example, imagine this being yogurt. And with these two pieces of information, we were able to go down to the batch level to actually find exactly which ingredients and which farms gave milk, for example, for that yogurt. So as a customer, you would have a much more increased trust in this brand uh, as, as uh, the consequence of being able to, to check this information on a daily basis. Okay, for whom will this development be potentially disruptive? Um, what companies will win and lose given your company and technology will keep growing? So w when you look at tech like this and, and the concept of transparency, it's always supposed to incentivize good behavior, right? So, and that's why blockchain uh, is especially interesting because it, it has incentive mechanisms that are unprecedented. We haven't seen them so far, uh, at least in the tech world. So right now, uh, what as companies such as the food companies wanting to become transparent towards their consumers or potentially transparent between each other uh, in, in a supply chain that, that they're either involved with, which might be arbitrarily long, so it can go all the way to China, like you mentioned. Um, th these problems of not having the information or having opaqueness in the chain can be problematic on all sorts of levels, and in that sense, becoming more transparent is going to incentivize good behavior. Now, incentivizing good behavior can, in, in the end, um, promote great um, trust, especially to consumers, which in the store would then choose that yogurt uh, as opposed to another one that is not transparent in there in that sense. So that is one of some of the cases that we've already actually implemented blockchain technology because in, in actual uh, contact with the market, this is so far proven to be the, the most uh, a sort of easy to understand case. So can I just ask everyone who's here, is there, who understands or knows what blockchain technology is? Just show of hands. Uh, not okay, pretty... every hand goes up. So since you're the expert, can you sum up blockchain in two sentences? Or how do you explain it to, let's say, a five-year-old? Uh, okay, so imagine a list of groceries you have to, to, to go and buy, and then this list um, is something that ends up filling your fridge. So every day you need to fill it up again, right, when you consume something. And, um, you know, uh, in, in that sense, you can look at it as something that um, can can be manipulated so someone can buy wrong food right or can have a different sort of uh, um, incentive in that sense to buy something you they like and, and your i don't know family uh, brother whoever doesn't uh, so in that sense you can have this list having been controlled by everyone so imagine everyone having the list instead of just one person and being able to make sure that what's on the list is really in the fridge so that's kind of like a five-year-old explanation okay. um, the best as I could. <laughs> Very good. Now, I would be curious to hear your opinion on this. Um, we all know that Germany, Europe uh, sort of lost in the first wave of digitalization, meaning the combination of broadband, internet and the smartphone. And ever since I understood blockchain, I've become more hopeful uh, for Europe, for Germany, because as I understand it, but I would like your opinion on that, blockchain, a blockchain-based economy would favor any individual, any organization who creates something original, who manufactures, who uh, composes, the creators, do you share that view? Um, okay, so essentially yes. Uh, the, the whole point being that you can design very interesting incentive mechanisms around uh, the, the, the new business models that this unlocks. So 
Having that said, you remove the intermediaries that are traditional, especially within supply chains. It doesn't have to be physical supply chains. It can also be digital, like art, like these guys that, that make such impressive music. We just heard uh, that this industry has quite a big potential because it's very old. Actually, all of them are very old. And in that sense, we're, as Habib said, uh, we are very used to the old uh, mindset of thinking. There's going to be new models that, that might or might not use blockchain, that they're actually going to empower creation in such a way that the value doesn't get um, diluted in between the creator and the, I might say, consumer or someone who is actually involved with, with the creation. So you mentioned that the old intermediaries, I guess we mean banks, notaries, maybe even some of the digital star intermediaries like Amazon, uh, eBay, etc., are potentially threatened by this technology? Um, absolutely. And I mean, the, the, the actual um, perception of, of the, the, um, com the community or generally uh, just you know, people are perceiving this more and more as a problem. For example, yesterday there was a, a big um, event with a certain kind of right-wing portal in the US. I don't know if you guys heard the story, but they were basically censored and GoDaddy said, okay, you're no longer gonna have to be able to have your domain name on our service. And, and that's a little bit scary. I mean, I know it's a, it is a, a right-wing, whatever sort of a political a spectrum a position of, of a portal, but some company like GoDaddy can decide to take them off the internet. And that can happen with Amazon and Google and Facebook, and it's been going on. It's been going on with, for example, cryptocurrency commercials. So in that sense, this is stirring up some, uh, some uh, soup here, you know, and, and people are starting to look at, for alternatives which will show up for sure for Facebook, for Amazon, and there are already some being built, one of them actually being built by us. But essentially, a lot of it is being built in Germany, which is really amazing. For example, Swarm. Swarm is a decentralized storage network uh, being built for tamper-proofness, that no one really controls the data. So you, mm -hmm. as yourself, are the sole owner and controller of this data, and not even governments in the world can be able to, to destroy it up to, to a certain point. So that is something that's going to change the perception and business models completely. And I think all these intermediaries, the Ubers of the world and Facebook are going to have a tough time if they don't actually start moving in this direction. Will there be new intermediaries and who will they be? Like controlling access to public or private blockchains? Yeah, so we're going to have a transitional period and a blockchain in a way itself is going to be the intermediary. But it's an intermediary that you can trust because you don't longer... Because when you, when you think about trust, you really have two issues. You have bad character and you have bad data. And blockchain cannot solve bad character entirely, but it can incentivize good behavior. And in terms of bad data, you can tackle it really well because it has mechanisms of cryptography and math and programming that actually let it show you if that data is good or bad. So in that sense, it, it gives an, a very unprecedented level of trust, high one, not infinite, but like a pretty big level of trust that then um, provides for, for such a different um, landscape to build business models on top. And um, yeah, I'm really glad to be part of this industry. When we think about the other emerging new technologies like AI, big data, machine learning, um, how do you see them interact, converge with blockchain technology? I, I don't see them any sort of other way because if you look at um, uh, what AI is both amazing and scary, right? And then, um, for example, brain machine interfaces are a thing and it's going to happen. Elon Musk and his uh, startup is one of his companies actually working on this. Um, so when you think about in 20 years from now, you're having some code run in your brain, you better make sure that that code should be trusted. So you would need some sort of a distributed ledger technology, blockchain, or call it whatever, um, that actually you are able to check what's going on in your brain. So it doesn't, so, so far, like techniques of like influencing your thought have been through mass media, through, through propaganda and, and whatnot. But this is going to open up a totally new door and we need to think about these things. Also, when it comes to automation, like in supply chains, uh, we're moving from lot size to, to lot size one. So you can go and order your tailor-made Nikes online that you specifically like, and then you get them automatically built and ordered and brought to your home. 
if this system doesn't have some sort of trust incorporated, it can be broken completely because people can start literally hacking and spamming the system. So you need, this doesn't go without any sort of protocol that has trust embedded in, inside of it and that's blockchain, at least for now. So one big potential of blockchain is, of course, to secure identity and to secure uh, information along the supply chain. And I learned that uh, most um, global supplies still come with a waybill, a consignment note, a piece of paper where it's written on which port the, the things entered and left. So how long do you think it will take until we have no more paper-based uh, um, consignment notes attached to global freight? Unfortunately, it's not going to be that quick, but it's going to, again, it's, uh, people ask me, for example, about the ROI of blockchain. And it's a very good question, but it's kind of like asking about the ROI of HTTP. Um, it it's doesn't go in, uh, hand in hand, so you need to think about the product. And companies that will, Im and supply chains actually, consortia of companies that are going to embrace new models and digitalization in not only blockchain but, but other mo uh, modules, um, they're going to have a big advantage in the market and that will then pull the market in. So I think it's going gonna, it's gonna to take a few years, but it's going to show value very soon. Um, so far, blockchain has been more of a hype than, than like showing real ROI, but uh, within the next year or two, we're going to see very, very good use cases that are actually measurable in terms of what, what they bring to the companies. Are there any questions from the audience, by the way? No? Okay, so I will actually close by asking a number of quick questions to uh, Branimir, um, starting the first half of the sentence and then he'll finish and we'll, we haven't prepared that, so we'll see what happens. So, um, lightning round. Uh, Branimir, uh, we, measure, we measure our success at original trail by? Um. How much we, how how many companies we made more efficient? Cryptocurrencies I own are um, Ethereum and Bitcoin. <laughs> I worry about um, the political situation. Where? Um, mostly in Europe, but generally Western world. I also worry about the Chinese system of. Um, have you seen the, the credit score system? I have seen that, yes. 80% yes. approval rate in the, with the Chinese citizens. That's, that's where, where blockchain could also kind of help a bit. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. For all the investors in the room, a valuable company that has not been founded yet? A uh, valuable company that has not been founded yet. Something that's going to that's gonna ensure that what you actually think is going to be able to translate it into a digital sense and that's also that that's very close to happening okay wow <laughs> um, diversity at original trail means um, that's that's very interesting I mean we started off diverse it's my co-founders are from Slovenia um, we have offices in Shanghai and Hong Kong as well uh, so we, we plan on opening one in Berlin by the way so generally yeah, we, we're a bunch of diverse people. We have musicians in the team. We have designers, clothing designers. We have painters. Um, that's, I believe, a good type of diversity. My advice to organizations that want to start using blockchain-based technology tomorrow is? To start now, because it's very early and it needs, it needs some time to kind of map out to the problem we have. And the fa last question, I will tell my friends that the DLD community and DLD Belgrade is? Absolutely amazing. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, Branimir. Thank you. Thank you.